We are the Gujarat Technological University. Since its inception over a decade ago, GTU has been empowering young and curating minds to realize their true potential. Over 4 lakh inspired students are enrolled with one of the premier academic universities in India. With more than 450 affiliated colleges in its fold operating across 5 zones of the state, GTU, the International Innovative University, your place to move forward. Hello dear friends, this is Dr. Hitesh R. Ashani, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, VVP Engineering College Rajkot, welcome you all in this lecture of Basic Civil Engineering of first semester or second semester. Today I am going to discuss the few topics from the chapter surveying from module 4. These are the four topics that I am going to explain in this lecture. First one is uh, introduction and definition of surveying. Second, purpose and use of surveying. Third one, division of surveying. And fourth one, principles of surveying. So let us start with the first one. What is surveying? So, surveying is an art and science to determine the relative positions or locations of the points which are located on the surface of the earth, above the surface of the earth, or below the surface of the earth. By taking the horizontal measurements and by taking the vertical measurements like distance and directions, angles, vertical distance, using the various precise surveying instruments. So that art and that science is known as surveying. After taking the measurements in the field, calculations are done in office and plans and maps, basically drawings are prepared. Now, what is the use of these drawings that is prepared by using the surveying? So, these drawings can be used for the planning of any engineering projects. That drawings can be used for the selection of the proper site of our engineering projects. It will use to mark the boundaries and it will use to show the engineering features like buildings, roads, railways, dams, canal, etc. on the drawing. Now, what is leveling? It is a branch of surveying which deals with measurement, measurement of relative heights of points which are located on the surface of the earth, above the surface of the earth, or below the surface of the earth in the vertical plane. So that is known as the leveling. Leveling is, we can say, when I am saying surveying, it includes leveling itself. Now, what are the various purposes of surveying? First, surveying is used to take the measurements to determine the relative positions of the points Second, to determine area and volume. Third, to mark position of buildings, canals, roads, etc. Fourth, to prepare plans and maps to show relative positions of the objects. And fifth, to fix the boundaries of the district, state, and countries. Now, let us discuss about the various uses of surveying. First one, surveying is used to prepare the topographical map 
to show the features like rivers, hills, forests, buildings, railways, dams, canal, etc. on the paper. Surveying use is used to prepare the terrestrial map, which shows the boundaries of the fields and plots. Surveying is used to prepare the contour map to know the topography of the area to find the best possible location for our engineering project. It is used to fix the center line of the road, railway, canal, tunnel, bridge, electric tower projects, etc. Fifth, to lay the slope for water supply pipeline project, for the drainage pipeline project, gas pipeline project, or for the road construction projects. Sixth one, it is used to plot the irregular shape boundaries of any plot and structures. Seven, to find the level difference between the two points that is located on the surface of the earth. Eight, surveying is used for the military purpose to find the location of the strategic importance. Nine, Surveying is used for the city survey work for the street water supply and sewage system projects. And last one, it is used to transfer the details from the map on the ground. Now, let us discuss the primary division of surveying. So, by keeping in the mind the curvature of the earth, Surveying is divided into two divisions. One is the plane surveying and second is the geodetic survey. You can see the figure that is given here in the slide. Now we will discuss first plane surveying. So in plane surveying, curvature of the earth surface is not considered. When we are going for the plane surveying, that means curvature of the earth surface it is not taken into account in case of the plane surveying. That means line joining the two points in case of the plane surveying is always a straight line. And the triangle formed by the three points that triangle is considered as a plane triangle and the angle of the triangle is considered as a plane angle. You can see the figure, the bottom figure that is given here. There are three points, capital A, capital B and capital C. Here the line joining between the two points AB, BC and AC are the straight line because we have not considered the curvature of the earth surface during the survey work. You can see the line joining the three points and the triangle that is created is known as the plane triangle and the angle of this triangle is considered as a plane angle. The accuracy of the plane survey is low. Plane surveying is used for the survey area which is less than 250 square kilometer. Plane surveying is carried out by the local agency or by the state agencies like irrigation department, road and building department, and railway department. Next one is the geodetic survey. In geodetic survey, during the survey work, curvature of the earth surface is taken into account. So in case of the geodetic survey, the line during the two points is always a cowed line. You see in the bottom figure, A, B, C are the three points located on the surface of the earth. And the line during the point A, B, B, C and A, C are the cowed line because we are considering the curvature of the earth during the survey. So this line is always cowed line. The triangle formed by the three points, this is in the figure, 
triangle formed formed by joining the three points a b and c this triangle is considered as a spherical triangle and the angle of this spherical triangle is considered as a spherical angle so these three angles are the spherical angles accuracy of this surveying is very high and it is used for the survey of the large area generally when the survey area is more than 250 square kilometer it is adopted carried out by the survey of indian department the agency of the central government now fundamental principles of surveying so there are two principles of surveying number 1 to work from whole to part number 2 to locate a new station by at least two measurements so let us start with the first principle to work from whole to part so this principle state that first establish the control points means main stations with the high accuracy and then divide the whole area into small areas by well conditioned triangles means all the angles of the triangles having the value more than 30 degree and less than 120 degree with slight less accuracy the object of this principle is to prevent the accumulation of the error in surveying work now let us see in this uh, figure we will try to understand the first principle to work from whole to part in figure capital a capital b and capital c are the main control stations then capital p q r and x y z are the minor control stations now triangle a b c is main triangle and triangle p q r and x y z are the subsidiary triangles now let us see the first point here first of all the control points a b and c are fixed with the great accuracy and the framework abc is prepared the main survey line ab bc and ca is measured with the high accuracy now the main framework abc is subdivided into small triangles p q r and x y z by the method of triangulation method of triangulation means we have to divide the whole survey area into network of triangles so here our main triangle was main area was abc and that area we have divided into small triangles by creating the p q r and x y z subsidiary control points the sides of these triangles mean sides of the subsidiary triangles are measured with less accuracy and the details within these triangles are surveyed with the less accuracy using the chain or tape so this is the first principle of surveying now second principle of surveying is to locate a new station by taking two measurements now you can see in the figure a and b is my two stations located on the surface of the earth now with respect to a and b i want to establish one new station on the drawing sheet that that is possible by three ways number 1 by taking the two linear measurements number 2 by taking the two angular measurements and number 3 by taking the one linear and one angular measurement with respect to the already established station a and b on the ground so now uh, firstly a and b are the two control points as we have discussed on the surface of the earth first we have to measure the distance ab accurately on the field 
and the relative positions of the A and B are plotted on the drawing sheet to some scale. So this line AB on the ground, we have to transfer on the drawing sheet as a small AB or you can say as a capital AB, no issue. Now, we have to establish the station C on the drawing sheet with respect to the two already plotted position of A and B. So first case is by taking the two linear measurements from A and B for the C. Now we are knowing that on the ground, we are having the station A and station B, plus we are having the station C on the ground. Now on ground, by taking the two linear measurements, one from A to C and one from B to C, we will plot the location of station C, which is on the ground on the drawing sheet. So that is the first case. So first we have to measure the distance AC on the ground and we have to measure the distance BC on the ground by using the chain or tap. Now, on paper, as per the scale, the line AB taken distance from AC and mark the arc from A. Now, what I said here in this sentence, so we are having the distance AC on the ground. So we have measured the distance AC on the ground. So we have to convert the distance AC of the ground as per the scale. And from by taking the arc from the station A, which is located on the paper, we have to put a arc. Now, distance BC is measured on the ground that we have to convert as per the scale. And from B, we have to mark a arc on the paper. So intersection of the arc AC and the intersection of the arc BC will give the correct location of the ground station C on the paper. So this is by the location of a new station by the two linear measurement. Now case two, again, we have to locate the point C on the drawing sheet by two linear measurements. Now in this case, in second situation, on the ground from point C, first lay a perpendicular CD such that point D comes on the line AB as shown in the figure on ground from point C, you have to lay the perpendicular with respect to AB and that is meeting line AB at B. Now measure the distance AD on the ground and measure the distance CD on the ground. Now as per the scale of the line AB, mark the point D on the line AB on the drawing sheet and from D, draw a perpendicular line by using the protector and on that perpendicular line as per the ground distance CD, convert the distance as per the scale and from D, mark the location of the station or point C on that particular line. And that will give the location of the station C on the drawing C. Now case number three, by one angular measurement and by one linear measurement. Here we have to measure one angle and one distance and we have to, in the field, we have to measure one distance and one angle. And by using that, we will plot the location of the station C on the drawing C. Angle A, B, C is measured on the field with the help of the angle measuring instruments. So we have to measure this angle A, B, C on the ground by the angle measuring instrument that is theodolite and that is coming equal to suppose theta. 
now linear measurement of the line bc is also taken in the field we have to measure the distance bc by means of tape on the field now after taking these two measurements we have to plot these measurements on the drawing sheet so at the point b on the drawing drawing sheet put the protector and measure the angle on the protector as per the angle theta that is measured in the field and draw a line so that will give the line bd now on this line bd distance bc is converted in the scale and from station b on the ground on line bd a point is marked that will give the location of the station c now case number 4 by two angular measurements means here we have to measure the two angles so which angles are measured the first angle bac is measured on the field with the help of the angle measuring instrument and that is coming equal to theta 1 and the second angle that is measured is a b and c in the field with the help of the angle measuring instrument and that is coming to theta 2 now with the help of the protector measured angle in the field that is theta 1 and theta 2 is drawn as a line ad and line be from the point a and b respectively and the intersection of the line ad and the intersection of the line b will give the new point c on the paper in the last case is by one angular measurement and one linear measurement so in the field angle a b c is measured with the help of the angle measuring instrument that is coming to theta 1 and the length ac in the field is measured now after taking these two measurements in the field work is done on the paper with the help of the protector the measured angles in the field that is theta 1 is drawn as a line be from the point b using the protector then from point a draw a arc capital ac of the field measurement as per the scale of the line ab so the arc will intersect the line b at some location and that point or that location of the intersection of the arc on the bc will give the location of the new station c of the ground on the drawing sheet so in this way in this five ways we can plot the location of the new station c with respect to already plotted points a and b so thank you very much